Hello everyone, welcome back to Pat Problems with Helena and Kat. My name is Kat, I'm Physics Access Officer at Oxford University, and today I'm going to be taking you through question 7 from the 2015 Pat paper. A quick piece of advice before we start, the 2024 Pat paper is a multiple choice Pat. So after you've worked through questions very similar to these ones, you would be selecting an answer from a set of options at the end. And in fact, that can be quite useful in figuring out exactly how far to take your working. We'll talk about that a little bit at the, at the end. Let's get started though. Question seven is a geometry question. We're given a diagram below. You can see I've already started putting on a few bits of information on mine. And it tells us that it's only approximately to scale. It tells us that the lengths AB, BC, CD and DA are all equal tells us that E is at the center of the larger circle. It tells us that this smaller circle is at a tangent. You can see that's why I've dotted in my radius and my right angle up to E. And it's at a tangent to all three of these lines, which means that triangle uh, C, B, C, D must be an equilateral triangle. So each of these angles must be 60 degrees. And we're asked to derive an exact expression for the area of the shaded region in terms of r. So in total what I'm going to be doing is finding the area of the large circle, subtracting the two triangles which form the diamond, and then adding on the small circle. That small circle I've been told has a radius r, so I can pencil that one in straight away. That area is going to be pi r squared. To work out the area of the large circle, I'm going to need to find its radius, which is also the perpendicular height of that triangle. So I will need to find that perpendicular height, or the radius, and I will also need the length EB so that I can calculate out these triangles. If I start zooming in on that length EB that I've just mentioned I need, I can see it forms a right angled triangle with the radius of the small circle up to E and across. And because this is 60 degrees, this is an equilateral triangle, this is 60 degrees, that angle there is going to be 30 degrees. Let's zoom in on that triangle and take it from there. So E being my center point, center of my circle, and B, this length being R, and I know that this is 30 and this is 60 degrees. That means, nice and simply, I can use tan. So I can say that tan of 60 degrees is my opposite side, or length EB, over my adjacent side, which in this case is R. Using the exact value of tan 60 as root 3, I've straight away got the fact that EB is equal to root 3 R, and DB is twice root 3 R. So I've already got one of the factors that I need to be able to calculate the area of this triangle and the diamond, and the next stage is going to be working out this perpendicular height. Let's zoom in on that diamond to help, well, on half of the diamond, let's zoom in on the triangle part to help us calculate that perpendicular height. So if this is D, this is A, this is B, and in the middle we've got E, we're coming in for this perpendicular height. I know that this length is my root 3R that I just calculated. I know that this one is 30, this one is 60. And then I can use tan again to calculate this length E. So if I come in with tan 30, let's go from the top, why not? Change something else. So tan 30 is my opposite, root 3R, over my adjacent, which is my perpendicular height, AE. I know that tan 30 is 1 over root 3. It's going to give me root 3r over my perpendicular height. So AE is 3r. Actually, I'm pretty much there. So I now know that AE is 3r. So I can come back and say that this is going to be pi times 3r squared for the area of that big one. And for the area of the diamond, which I'll put in here, and I'm going to have a half times base times height for the triangle. The base is my db, so twice root 3r. My perpendicular height is my ae, which I just worked out as being 3r. 
And if I multiply all of those together, I come out with 3 times 2 is 6, times a half is 3. So 3 r root 3 r, or 3 root 3 r squared. Double that to get the area of the diamond. And we have 6 root 3 r squared. I'm now at the point where I need to put it all together to work out the area of the shaded region. So that shaded region is my pi times 3r all squared for the big shaded circle. I'm going to take off 6 root 3r squared for the diamonds and then add back in pi r squared for the small circle. At this point, because you're going to be sitting a multiple choice paper in 2024, you'll have a really good idea of how far you need to take this in simplifying. You might actually be able to select your answer from this point and not need to go any further. You might not quite be there yet. You can see that this one is going to give me 9 pi r squared, and I have another pi r squared on the end. Take away 6 root 3 r squared. And you just keep going until your answer matches the format of the multiple choice questions. So I'm going to take it to 10 pi, take away 6 root 3 r squared. You would take it as far as the answer that you had to select. That is question 7 from the 2015 PAT paper. Join us next week when I'll be taking you through question 8. Thank you very much.